Come on, baby, you can do it. These battery cables, they're, uh, they're shot. This right here needs to go. That is nothing. Oh. <laughs> I think the power it makes is gonna be surprising to everybody. thing was. We drove it around for like an hour and a half. I know. Listen, I didn't say I knew where it was. That's not what I said. What'd you say then? I said I had a really good idea of where it might be. It's been a long time. All right. Like everything looks different. How am, I, <laughs> how am I supposed to know? Well, and to be honest with you, now that we're all the way up here, I don't even know if it's still there. If I tell you that I don't have any idea where this thing is or if it's still there, you might lack the commitment necessary to drive hours on end in the rain to look for this thing. There's an old Ooh, bus. bus. <laughs> <laughs> See? You never know. So Listen, you got to keep your eye on the prize here. I want to resurrect this thing, bring it back to life, and put it back to work. I'm not going to tell you what it is till book one, it might not be there. <laughs> If we find the goddamn thing, I think I think we will find the GD thing. Okay, here we go. It is still here. I knew I seen it. That's what I'm talking about. Holmes 440. Good thing we brought a pop-up, because we're going to need it. <coughs> Chevrolet. This is one Chevy I'm okay with. Yeah, I was right with the Chevy. Yeah, you were. It is a Chevy. <laughs> you brought the pop-up, right? Because I think this weather's not going to cooperate with us. Ah, it'll pull. We're good. I brought my bathing suit. How sweet is this thing? I got a little bit of detailing to do. Actually, I got a lot of detailing to do. Well, first, I don't even know if it runs, man. We got to see if we can get it to start. Dude. <laughs> it's been sitting a while. Oh, it's locked. That or it's seized. Yeah, the Zuki is not for sale. In fact, he laughed when I was on the phone with him. <laughs> And I asked about the Suzuki if it was still here. Oh, its name is Hooker. There you go. I thought its name was Thumper. It's been a while. All right, well, let's see if we can get it to run. All right, it's a Chevy, so teeth down, I'm guessing. Yeah. <laughs> It's like a fan or something. <laughs> Off. Oh, everything is really stiff. I don't want to force it. All right, well, let's double check our connections and give this thing a shot and see what happens. Yeah, I'll be right back. Gotcha. Oh. What is that, a 350, 400? He said it, had a, said it had a 400 small block, if I remember correctly. Man, so you've been sitting a lot, and a single master? Look at this. <laughs> that is brutal. Let's have a look. But yeah, 400 cubic inch small block, the battery's been left hooked up. We won't be driving it with those brakes. <laughs> if it has any brakes, I don't think it. I, I don't think it, it does. does. I doubt very much, man. It's been in this spot as long as I can remember. We got the history on this truck too. It originally came from Kelowna. Milton's Towing was a Kelowna bridge truck. She's a bit crusty up here, but not Forest bad. Land. That's it. Forest Land. That's it, hey. Eh? Well, I'll take the current owner's word that it's a '74. Let's have another. Have another look here around her, guys. And gals. 
She's got a Holmes 440 boom on it and a wheel lift that was added after. And it's extra stubby so it could turn around in the width of the bridge in Kelowna, BC. Yeah, that's the flaking up here. Yep. It doesn't look like it's rotten through. It's just the, the white paint job flaking off. It was oh. originally, sorry, Bobo, was originally blue, guys and gals. I like the pinstriping. I wouldn't paint it. Well, let's see if we can get this old girl to come to life. I have confidence and doubts because if you look at the... <laughs> That air cleaner there has obviously been there for a long time, but somebody flipped the lid. And let's be honest, anybody that's had a 70s Chevy knows that if you flip the lid, it's an immediate 50 horsepower gain. So if they were smart enough to flip the lid, I think it'll run. What are you seeing, bro? Everything looks like it's intact. It's, it's complete. That's the thing. And yeah, okay, obviously she's been sitting for a long time, gang, but... This is what you want to find. Complete. The air can still on. Bobo, let's pop that lid off and take a look underneath at the carburetor. We'll see what's going on. We're going to have to put fuel down it or give her a little spray or something to get it going. We'll make sure the throttle linkage is free. Oh, it's coming, going to come off in one piece. I'll keep an eye for vacuum lines. Just grab the whole unit. No vacuum lines. Good. Is it a two barrel or a four barrel? Does it have rear butterflies? I can't tell no. from here. Stick your finger against... Is that just a two barrel? No, it is a four barrel. Okay, I couldn't tell from here. Okay. All right, Bobo, here, I'll give. I'll hand this to you. I'm going to go push on the throttle. Tell me if it moves freely now. Moves freely. It's got an HEI distributor, so that's a good sign. Okay. Oh, she's a bit stiff in here but still good i'm thinking this battery's probably dead but that's why we have the big beefy jump box we'll clean these connections we'll check the timing check the coolant check the oil and get to it all right so we got a quadra bog <laughs> by the looks of it the choke works oh she is dry dry the turn springs are all good this is what is this what is that for that's something down there that must be for the pto Pablo, if you want to start by getting a, a half inch let's get the battery terminals off get it cleaned we'll leave this battery in when we jump it but i want to clean the connections now can i get her to turn over uh-oh Okay, it's had a water pump in the last decade. I can tell by the rear plate here. So, four barrel quadra bog. I'm not sure, but in 74, probably originally had points. That's an HEI distributor, which is good. It, uh, and this is it, it's unmolested. Mechanical fuel pump, I don't know how old the gas is. We'll have to check that. It's at a gas station, so that'll come in handy. It's an interesting vacuum wiper setup. Yeah, vacuum wipers, that'll be entertaining. <laughs> when was the last time anybody saw vacuum wipers? Uh, well, I mean, oh wait, the 39, 39 has them, yeah. But it looks like somebody did a water pump not too long ago, well, listen, when you're resurrecting history not too long ago could be about 10 years by the looks of the air filter it's been sitting an extensive period of time <laughs> bobo you got the <laughs> but it'll be all right you just got to get that loose it is off it is it's loose oh okay maybe a pair of pliers <laughs> huh it's an interesting vehicle to work on you have to stand quite high up here in order to work on it. Let's see what she's got in her for oil. Oh, she definitely needs some oil. This is one thing a lot of people, when they're first trying to start something, they don't do is top up the oil. 
I don't get that. I mean, for the maybe four bucks in oil, even if it needs three liters. So this bad boy is about two liters low. Let's increase our odds of success. Yeah, well, at least a liter low. But yeah. there's no there's no milk in it, which is good. She's been sitting on dry ground with the air can on, which is awesome because there was some mice in the top of that. Oh, there you go. Always go for the box end, bro. Give her a tap. <laughs> hmm. That's not, oh, yeah, that's broken. That one's done. So, we're going to need a new end. And we're going to have to remember, let's leave the negative hooked up. Although it's pretty obvious it's hooked to the block. But both the wires are orange. All right, so these battery cables, they're, uh, they're shot. Yep, there we go. This, we can get off of here and uh, clean it up and use it. It should be okay. We just got to get it off the end of this, eh? Oh, yep, there we go. <laughs> I'm waiting for that. Yep. There is the reason. <laughs> oh, she done. This one's fine. We just need a wire brush to clean that. I'm going to use my trusty knife to get some fresh copper showing. Always be careful when you're doing this, guys. I've done it about a million times, but be careful if you ever do this. I suggest you wear gloves, actually. Do as I say, not as I do. There we go. Nice clean end. Pass me the positive one. Here's another tip. Run them out so you got room. Put it on upside down. Then you won't have to worry about the nuts dropping through and it's just a lot easier. Technically, this battery isn't, isn't what is gonna start the truck. I'm doing this to complete the circuits. This is for the wheel lift. Okay, so we're cleaning up the starting terminals. Now this truck has a dual battery setup. We had to replace one of the terminals right here. And now nice. I am going to go grab a nice new battery. Luckily, we are at the place that this truck was originally, well, not originally, but this truck spent a good portion of its life at, which happens to have batteries in stock. That's a first for us, eh? We've never revived anything know, right? beside a garage that's like, hey, yeah, here's a terminal, here's a battery. It's awesome. What do you guys think? You think this 400 is going to roar to life or are we going to have issues? I don't think we'll have issues. I think she'll be solid. I mean, it's a Chevy small block. Okay. Let's go to this side. On the passenger side. That's badass. I don't think that we've ever had a nice new battery. We brought our own, but it's always the, whichever one I managed to bring back to life by slowly uh, two amp charging. Yep. Now, of course, once she's running and driving and it's got brakes, we'll go over all the connections, probably replace these ends too. Today, we're just replacing what is necessary to attempt to fire up. We do have this in case it doesn't start. If you're gonna be reviving anything, resurrecting anything, you want one of these. It's the easiest way to check for spark. You don't gotta fight with a screwdriver or try to hold it against the head. It's simple. You plug this onto the spark plug, this onto the lead, put the spark plug back in the engine, you can even still run the engine with this on. I usually don't check for spark unless I don't have any signs of popping off. Now we've checked this one and it appears to be accurate. If you're working on a small block Chevy, 18436572 is the firing order on a small block Chevy. I believe the small block 400 is the same. Right now the wires are hooked up correctly. Nobody knows when this ran last. It drove in here under its own power, but we don't know. Also, I got to top up the oil. Let's get to it. We're gonna try to break the seal on this if I can get this spark plug wire off. Yep, nice. So, plug that into there, like that. And then we're gonna hook the spark plug to this so we can keep an eye on it and see if it's got fire. Mm -hmm. I mean, if it starts, obviously it's got spark, but can't hurt to do this. So, maybe, I think it's time to put fuel in it. We turned it over by hand. 
I'm going to lube up the linkages here so we don't get any hang-ups on the throttle. Can't hurt putting some WD down the throats either because it's just fish oil. I don't know if that factory choke is going to work. I don't really even want the choke on. Well, we'll see if it works. Lube it up good. Water pump is solid and it spins. Spins over by hand. Okay. Oh, no. oh I hate this. Come on. Get, there we go. Little bit of spillage isn't a big deal. But we want to fill the float bowls. One, it'll see, we'll be able to tell if it leaks. Okay. We're getting some fuel out of the other vent. Yep. So. That'll be enough. We got a little bit down the throat, not the end of the world. Now it's time to go see if it runs. All right, folks, listen. I've seen it far too often. Accidents happen. Have a fire extinguisher on hand. When you're reviving or resurrecting any kind of old vehicle, no matter what fuel source it uses, you don't know what's gonna happen. It's been time, it's hard on stuff. Have one of these handy. And make sure it is an ABC, not just for water because you do not want to spray water on a gas fire all right give her a couple of pumps it should put gas down the carburetor i like to start with three in neutral puts on the clutch <laughs> that's a good sign come on baby you can do it it'll go I might need to put some more fuel in it, we'll see. Second, brother, go check. Not working. Oh, they blink. There they are. Oh, there they go. Yep. Nope. guys the 1974 GMC is alive now I get it it's got a Chevy grill in it that was put in who knows what year sometime in the 80s probably but it is a GMC it does have a 400 cubic inch small block we've confirmed a whole bunch of history on the truck it's an amazing machine Here, here's one little thing when I can get the headlights to work on a vehicle and I can get it to start back up that is when I consider it alive now the brakes are frozen solid 
we're gonna have to put hydro boost brakes on it it's obviously well I, I think it's gonna need tires I got the clutch to move in and out I did put some load on it in first gear so I know it works I'm not <laughs> gonna take the chance of this thing slipping into gear and not being able to disengage it this truck is basically a one of one it was designed to work on a narrow bridge that's why she's so stubby now the truck's name is hooker I think we got to keep it it's bad luck to change the name but we're also going to call it Stubby, as in Stubby Bob, a.k.a. St well, we can't say Stubby Bob, but what do you think, Bobo? Stubby, B well, I don't know. I don't know. You guys tell us, what should be Hooker's a.k.a., also known as? We would love to hear from you. Now, let's see if the headlights will work and if it'll restart, because we've had it shut off now. So let's check it. Ready, Bobo? Clear. Yep. I'm going to show them the temperature gauge here. It's barely off the peg of 100. Got no vacuum, good amps, good oil pressure. I don't know if the fuel gauge works. That's a very typical Genie GMC, Jimmy, Chevy thing to do. What a sweetheart. Hey, Bobo. Yeah, buddy. Well, I'm falling. <laughs> it's uh, the hazards of resurrecting things. Look at that master cylinder. Where's the last time you saw a single pot master that big? Vacuum wipers, which I doubt work. I'm not even going to try them yet. I don't want to break the arm. Horn works. Oh, thanks, bro. That is a heavy duty front bumper. Turn the headlights on again, Bobo. Headlights are on. Kind of a marker light. Let's see. I heard her load up. Pop in, Bobo. Let's see if we can get the rotators working. Pull that out. Or push it in, maybe. I... No, nothing. Is there any other auxiliary switches? Oh, there we go. Oh, that made something come on. Oh, oh, we got rotators. The lift is trying to work. Okay, we got rotators. Well, they're blinkies, but whatever. Oh, you got, it's all your reverse lights. Got no cab lights, eh? No, That's no fine. cab lights. We can fix that. Yeah, I know. I'm just checking up here. Things start working too when you bring stuff back to life. She's a bit rough right here, but not rotten right through. Oh, there you go. Low beams are working now. See, that's what I mean, guys. A lot of the times you'll bring stuff back to life and initially stuff doesn't work. Like we had no headlights in the beginning, then just high beams. Now we got low and high working. When you let something sit for a long time, it will recover. There's a lot of stuff that will self-heal. Let's take a look in here. Oh! <laughs> well, that's a first. Never had a uh, handful of rust water quite like that before. It was like tomato juice. We got a box over here. Dryer, but wetter inside. Weird, hey eh, guys? Okay. Ah. Okay, give me out. Okay, down. Nice. Okay, up. Good. In. Good. That is wicked. So that's what I consider officially alive. Look at that bad boy. What a sweetheart. I just want to clean it up now and get it I going. know, I just want to hook something to the back just of it give her. and start doing some more resurrections. All right, guys, we're back with the Chevy C50 hooker. You may notice it's sunny. We've been on the road for a couple weeks making things happen. Make sure you go check out the other videos. We resurrected some amazing pieces of history. All right, now we're hoping to pick this truck up it still hasn't been polished. There's still some nooks and crannies that need to be done. But let's take a look at it now that all the moss is sprayed off. Come on with me. So I'll let you take a peek in the inside. The reason the interior looks so nice is because it was really, really well stored. It had dry the air put in it, dryer sheets to keep mice away. It's how you need to store stuff when it's parked. Now the outside took a bit of a beating. That's what happens in a... A rainforest essentially which is where we're located 
We decoded the VIN number here. This truck did come with a factory 400 cubic inch small block with a four barrel carburetor. The reason why it doesn't have any RPO codes, and if you're a Chevy person, you know what an RPO code is, in the glove box door is because this is not a light duty truck. It's a medium duty Chevy. All the information is right here. You decode it, and I had a Chevy truck aficionado do it for me, and then I double checked it. It's factory optioned this way. It was ordered with a specifically short wheelbase. The medium duties had a whole different realm. They were marketed differently than the light duties. They had a completely different option list. I do know that this deck has been on it since it was brand new, along with the Holmes 440 setup. I don't want to risk breaking something. The chain has some really stiff links for the PTO. We're going to wait till we actually own the truck. We'll grease everything, go through it. The cables are quite rough and really rusty. They'll need to be replaced. We're going to leave the truck essentially stock. The only things that we plan on updating, LED lighting, just for safety reasons. I believe the tires are okay. This truck is not going to be for hire, so it doesn't have to adhere to the same rules and regulations as a commercially hireable tow truck. We intend to keep it this color scheme. We're going to keep all this pinstriping. Everything that speaks to the truck's history is staying. The only stuff that will be upgraded and modified is safety things. We are going to detail the engine bay. Everything will get cleaned up. I'm going to run the factory air can with the lid flip, just a new filter. I'm going to re-gasket the engine, just the soft gaskets, not head gaskets and stuff. There isn't any major leaks. This right here needs to go. It's the factory brake master. It's a single pot master because medium duty vehicles didn't have the same rules. So car lovers, truck lovers out there, you will know that 1967, it was mandated by the American and Canadian governments that you had to have a dual master cylinder. Much like emissions, medium duties didn't have to adhere to the same rules. That's why you could get a 400 in this truck because it's a non-emission small block. I think the power it makes is going to be surprising to everybody. Other than that, it's going to stay a 1974 Chevy C50 tow truck. The only thing we're going to add is right up here or somewhere. It'll have a not for hire on the side of the hood. I'll get out of the way and let Bob will look down the other side of the truck there. As you guys can see, there is no significant body rot. The only spot that I found over here, and we're in kind of a tight spot, we can't drive the truck yet. The brakes are seized off. The pedal on the master, and we'll show you, is just, it's a rock. So, yeah, see, this side's solid. This is the only one here. Bobo, come show them this right here. Right in here. And that's from moisture sitting in there from sitting. You guys can see some of the white paint is flaking off. We hope to salvage as much as possible. We want to keep the truck the color it is. This pinstriping is in amazing shape. That was added when this gentleman bought the truck in the 90s. Same with this, this will stay. These can be brought back. We'll just tire shine them. The deck, like I said, it's staying a Holmes 440. We're gonna get this working, replace the rubbers on the lift and we will use it for old trucks. The stinger here works mint. It doesn't need anything other than some paint. All right, I'm gonna go fire the truck up and show you how the electric wheel lift works. I call them a stinger. A lot of tow truck guys do. I drove a tow truck in my younger days. I'm gonna go Right now on my ankles. 
there should be enough room. Well, come have a look. I think if we don't go too big, there's enough room right here, Blake thinks so, to put a stack up on both sides. Or do we leave it bottom exit? What do you think, Bobo? Bottom exit. Bobo's a fan of the bottom exit. I'm kind of a fan of the stacks, but I don't know. I don't think it'll suit it. You guys tell us, what do you think? Here, I'm gonna close the door. I'll pass that back to you, Bobo. Come, let me get out of the way. You take a look down the side of the truck, front and back, and then you tell us. Now, the one thing you haven't seen is it move under its own power. Well, we can't go for a full test drive because we haven't swapped in the Hydro Boost brakes yet. I can move it under its own power, which is what you're about to witness. Now, that, my friends, is the first time in a long time that this truck has moved under its own power. We intend to get it out onto the highway, but as I showed you, the master cylinder is seized. Now, I've had a lot of people say, uh, put a Cummins in it, put an 8.3 in it, uh, put a Duramax in it, swap a Detroit in it. I don't think it needs it. We're not gonna be hauling buses or anything massive with this truck. At most, it'll haul another full-size truck and it's got plenty of power for that. And the only upgrades mechanically that we are going to do is right over there, like we showed you, the Hydro Boost brakes. The only other thing I was thinking is probably get a hold of our friends at Champion Cooling, see if they have a four core rad for this. Old radiators deteriorate. We want to use this truck. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Leave a comment below. What do you guys want to see us do with this? What should we modify? What should we leave alone? Where should we take it? Do we take it to go resurrect stuff? What do you guys want to see happen to Hooker? Road trips, shows, you tell us. Without you guys, we can't do what we do. Thank you again for watching. Don't forget to check out the links in the description below. Hit that subscribe button because it's free. And we'll see you again soon. Cheers, gang. First find this trip. And whoever moved it, Knocked both front tires off the beat. Just don't try this at home, okay? So I really want it to go this time. There we go.